And one of the things that concerns me most about where we're at in society is the sort of socialism, communism, you know, entrepreneurship is bad, technology is bad, and polarization of wealth and, you know, people getting rich is a bad thing. When I grew up, I'm 50 now, but when I was a Gen Xer growing up, we kind of maybe too much idolized Bill Gates and people who were doing interesting things in the world, and we thought capitalism was a force for good. I still believe capitalism is a force for good because when a group of people builds a product or service that changes the world and it, and it gets globally distributed, whether it's Tesla or SpaceX or Google or Airbnb or Uber or Robinhood, you know, everybody gets to benefit from that product or service having to compete. And if you look at the places where there's no competition, like public education or less, you know, profe- you know, uh, you know, established, uh, you know, colleges and stuff like that, less competition for accreditation degrees, like things tend to get a little weird, don't they? Yeah. Um, and people tend to be protected and that's not good. You need, you need competition. Um, does it mean that, you know, people shouldn't have global health care? It doesn't mean that, you know, we shouldn't have a safety net, but we need to keep capitalism vibrant, especially because China has now co-opted capitalism and created their own version of capitalism, which is communism with capitalism. It's like this weird operating system. Like we still want to keep communism so we can take any of your gains at any time, Yes. but we'd like you to be entrepreneurial. Yeah. And then you have somebody like, you know, um, you know, the founder of Alibaba, Jack Ma, who disappears for a couple of weeks. Uh, who's that? No, Jack, exactly. <laughs> like, who's Jack Ma? It's like, he kind of disappears for a couple of weeks and then he comes back and he's really sorry about the things he said. And then he disappears again. And like, you know, <laughs> yes. we have to be very careful. If China wins capitalism, yeah. this is going to be an existential threat for humanity. Yeah, The Chinese are no joke. I mean, they are seriously focused. Um, and they are picking the winners. It's a very weird system because it is, in fact, I don't know what you call it, like communism and capitalism is such uh, overloaded terms, but they do encourage entrepreneurship, but they, and they do a good job of it. Oh, yes. But but then they're like, they're like the surveillance thing and they're controlling things in a way. Yeah. It's, it's weird because it seems to work really well for them. Uh, in the short term, yes, it's definitely the, got short term benefits. So the question is like, what, <laughs> what, uh, how that gets distorted and becomes worse and worse and worse, which it potentially might be. And I, I think on you know, the the entrepreneurial spirit, which you have a podcast all centered around yeah. the entrepreneurial spirit, it is uh, is one of the magical things that makes this country great. I don't know if money is deeply tied into that. I do get bothered by people, you, you know treating the word billionaire as if it's a bad word. Yeah. But in general, like all the hard things, all the difficult things we're going through in this country, it seems like the way out is going to be uh, making the uh, the entrepreneur the hero of society, of like letting that young kid with the big dream and the guts to take the big risks and build yeah. something totally new, uh, make giving them a chance and whatever that involves. I, I don't think it's about taxes. I don't think it's about like uh, regulation, all that stuff. It's about us and just public discourse saying that that kid, that guy, that girl, they're, they're badasses. Like encourage them to do it. We have to have people buy in to the fact that they have that opportunity. And I think yeah. one of the problems in society is there's a group of people who actually don't believe that they can succeed or they don't believe even more perniciously that other people can. Yeah. And that's the group of people that I think are highly vocal, but a small group of people, which are generally people of incredible privilege, rich parents, white city dwellers, liberals. They kind of look and say, poor people cannot change it a lot. And they're they're battling in their minds to protect poor people and but they have this very weird patriarchal kind of approach to it, which is they think that they're not capable of changing their lot in life. And they're like, it's not possible. And then once in a while, I'll tweet something where I say, you know, it's really incredible that every piece of knowledge you could possibly want is now available for free on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And every course from MIT and Harvard and Stanford is available on edX or Coursera. And all that information is there freely available. And you can take the lectures. This is amazing. And then people will be like, yeah, but people don't have access to it. I'm like, they do. It's free. Here's the link. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, but they don't have internet. And I'm like, here's the chart of internet penetration in America. Like, And they're like, well, poor people don't have internet. And I'm like, really? <laughs> Find me 
any downtrodden person without a smartphone with a high speed connection. That capitalism provided for twelve dollars a month or fifteen dollars a month. Like it's very hard to find that, and, and we have it so well in this country, and there's so much opportunity, um, but people don't believe it, and and that's actually one of the problems. See, the average yeah. American still watches four or five hours of television a day. 